Kenner never actually made a figure of Yarna del Gargan, otherwise known as Jabba's Fat Dancer, but they did get fairly far along in the process for making a figure. In fact, they created a sculpt and a hard copy version, sort of a prototype version. They made a preliminary version of her artwork that would have gone on the coin she came with because she was going to be a Power of the Force character. And at some point along the line, they decided that they weren't going to go ahead and actually produce the character, probably because they thought it wasn't going to be very popular. And honestly, I don't know why they didn't <laughs> clue into that a little bit earlier, but I think it was probably the right decision, honestly. Even when Hasbro released a modern version of this character many years later, it was a notorious peg warmer and didn't sell well at all. So it's hard to imagine kids snapping them up if they had released her as part of the vintage line. But, of course, as a Jabba fan, I definitely would like to have one of her character in my vintage Kenner display. And uh, a lot of people, of course, throughout the years have agreed with me. There have been a lot of customs made of the character in a sort of quasi-Kenner style. For a long time, though, uh, it was relatively difficult to get a custom of this character because you would have to wait for someone to do a run of them or something or make it yourself. Uh, but thanks to the power of 3D printing, these days we have a lot of choices, even just for this one extremely niche character, which I think is really cool. So uh, that was kind of the inspiration for this video. I just wanted to show you some of the options that are available uh, for this character if you should want to get one for your own display. Now, uh, what we have here in front of me are the three main options that I was able to find in terms of 3D printed uh, Yarnas. Uh, there have been, as I say, sort of limited run type things throughout the years that exist, uh, but they're not easy to find. They're not the kind of thing you can just buy, whereas these are. So uh, let's go ahead and look at these. This one here on the left is from Vivid Motion Customs. This one actually is the only one that you can get the STL for and print yourself, so I printed this one myself, and I think it came out pretty well. Her face makes her look quite a bit older, I think, than the other versions of this character that I have here. I also noticed that they have her skirt split in two here to give her a little bit of articulation, although on mine, maybe it's part of the way that I printed it, I don't know, but basically these legs don't move, so I'm not sure it was really necessary to split the skirt in this way. It doesn't seem uh, entirely like a Kenner thing to do, right? But in any case, uh, it is nice that you're able to download the model for this and 3D print it yourself, so it's a, quite a cheap option if you wanted to have a Yarna in your display. Next up, we have the uh, one from Funky McClunky. This one is definitely the closest to the original Kenner prototype, which I think is pretty cool. Now, Funky McClunky is a uh, figure creator, I guess you would call him, on uh, Instagram. He has his own store, and he is selling these figures already printed. And... Uh, he was kind enough to send this to me free of charge to include in this video, so thank you very much to him. This is a great figure, I think. Really nicely done. Uh, nice print as well. Comes in several pieces, so like uh, it has a removable head piece like that, which I think is pretty cool, a unique feature of this one. You can also, I guess, yeah, we can remove the head if we really wanted to. Um, and then the body is kind of a multi-piece affair here. We've got this skirt that splits in two, and then we've got legs, and the torso kind of slots in like that. I imagine that when I actually finish this and paint it, I will uh, glue this together, the two sides of the skirt, and that'll pretty much remove any actual articulation that she has on her lower body, but... I mean, it's almost unavoidable, really. So, there's that one. As I say, nice looking figure. And finally, we have uh, a design, which is actually, I guess, a heavily reworked version of this. But a design from Trash Compactor Customs. Now, this one, uh, you cannot get the STL for. You have to buy... Uh, same with Funky McClunkies, you have to buy the 
printed figure from the uh, the Etsy store of Trash Compactor Customs, but he was kind enough to send this to me all the way from England. Uh, so let's look at this. First of all, we have uh, no removable headdress, but it's got quite a nice head sculpt there. Looks quite a bit like the actress, in my opinion. Nice body shape. <laughs> I mean, you know, accurate anyway. And uh, similarly to the Funky McClunky version, we've got kind of a, you know, a peg arrangement here for the body. Uh, this one, the skirt, is all part of the legs. And she has no articulation on her bottom uh, half as, at all. But he also does have a version which I will show you in just a second, that basically is naked uh, from the waist down, but you're, you know, with the intention that you would add a soft goods skirt to it. Now, I will say uh, to Trash Compactor Customs, he went above and beyond because I originally contacted him to see if I could get the STL for this so that I could print a jumbo version of Yarna to go along with my Jumbo Jabba that I have printed. And uh, understandably, he said, well, he didn't want to uh, start giving out the STL because, you know, once you do that, you never know what's going to happen. And I totally respect that. But when he sent me the uh, figure here, he not only sent this version, he also sent a Black Series scale version, so a 6-inch version, who doesn't quite even fit in the frame. There we go. <laughs> uh, and then we've got, not only that, he sent a jumbo version. Dun, 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 Can't even get her in the frame. Uh, this one he sent in pieces with sort of holes for magnetic articulation, because he had seen my video about the Jumbo Ula, where I had incorporated magnetic joints into her, and so I, I did add the magnets to her to achieve that articulation. So you can see she does have articulation there, and as I mentioned, this is the one without the skirt that's integrated into the body. So she has uh, movable legs, and I'm going to be adding some cloth, you know, soft goods skirt to her later on. I don't have any good place to put this person. <laughs> she's she's so giant, she fills up the entire frame here, so I'm going to have to take her out. But uh, what I'm going to do, as I mentioned, is... Uh, let's put her in the back. I'm going to paint all of these uh, to the best of my ability, and I'm just going to, you know, sort of give you an idea of what they all look like when they're uh, all finished up. And I'm not going to uh, make this a step-by-step -step kind of thing where I show all of the painting process, but uh, yeah, I'm looking forward to seeing how they look when they're all painted up. All right, here are the finished figures, and overall I'm pretty happy with how they turned out, although it was a lot more time-consuming to paint these than I actually had expected, given their relatively simple paint schemes. Uh, you really have to Try hard to get clean lines between your colors and have everything be, you know, relatively neat for this to look uh, decent, I think. So even though I didn't do any kind of fancy highlighting or shading or anything, it still kind of requires uh, a lot of precision. So, uh, yeah, it did take a long time. And the other thing is the faces are just so hard on these figures. So here we have the 12-inch version from uh, Trash Compactor Customs who again kindly sent me this print uh, just as a, a nice surprise to add to the collection, which I really appreciate. Uh, I think it came out really well overall, and especially this soft goods skirt, which I was very unsure about because I've never really done that before. I thought it came out pretty well. Uh, there was a pattern that uh, Trash Compactor Customs created for the figure they gave to me and uh, seems to work pretty well. You just, I just, in my case anyway, sort of taped it on to a piece of faux suede and cut it out. I had thought about doing burlap, but I think especially, I don't know, it just seems like it would be too uh, easily frayed and didn't also look like something that Kenner would use, you know, burlap. 
this could theoretically pass for something that Kenner would use, I thought. So anyway, uh, I thought it worked pretty well uh, on the back here. It's got these little thin things that you're supposed to wrap around, I think, and tie in the back, but mine broke off when I was trying to tie them, so I just ended up gluing a little bit on the back here to keep it on. But it seems to be working well. She has, of course, uh, the magnetic articulation on all of her limbs and the head, although the head can't turn because it's got uh, the hair there in the in the way, but I can take her head off should I ever want to. Uh, so yeah, we got the all the arms there, the, the arms and legs are articulated nicely. So yeah, pretty happy with this one. In fact, let's uh, see what she looks like next to my 12 inch Ula. So here we have them both together. And I think they look really good, actually. I think in terms of their relative sizes and heights, they're they're certainly acceptable. And uh, generally speaking, they just look really nice together. So i uh, really happy with how these turned out. And here we have the six inch and three and three quarter inch versions. Uh, pretty much the same story here, although the faces, well, I don't know, maybe they look better if they're smaller. They're, they're not any uh, technically better than the other one, but not, not too bad, I suppose. And the overall paint job is pretty much exactly the same as the other one. The uh, six inch one, it occurred to me after I was all done painting this, that it would make more sense probably to do this in a slightly more realistic style with shading and without the kind of very simple Kenner-like eyes, because I don't have anything else in this scale that's a Kenner style figure, and I could have used this with my Black Series figures. I think the sculpt of this is detailed enough that it can probably pass for a regular, you know, modern figure. Uh, so I don't know, maybe I'll have to think about doing that, but for now, I kind of wanted to do them all in the same style. Here we have the Vivid Motion Customs version and the one from Funky McClunky. This one, uh, Vivid Motion Customs, as I said, is the only one you can actually get the STL files for and 3D print yourself. So that's something to keep in mind. You could be, uh, you know, get this figure quite cheaply if you already have a resin printer, for example. Uh, so in that sense, that's a nice advantage. I did have trouble though, I don't know if this is because I printed this one myself or not, but I managed to get the arms kind of fused in place. They, they were okay before I painted it, but I painted the uh, the parts separately, and I guess there was a little too much paint buildup in there. I was hoping <laughs> it would just make them tight enough, but it made them a little bit too tight, so I can not really move her arms anymore. It's not a huge deal. And of course the legs were never really that articulated to begin with on this model, or any of them for that matter. Uh, this one, the Funky McClunky version, came out really nicely, I think. Uh, I, I didn't end up gluing the skirt just because it seems to stay on her without too much trouble, and I don't know. It is kind of funny that we have this whole articulated thing underneath here, legs that can move all over the place, but, uh, really you can't, <laughs> you can't really take advantage of that. You can use it maybe just a tiny bit. You can adjust their position to help her stand up straight, I suppose, but that's about it. And let's see, her arms are fine in terms of their functionality. So, yeah, pretty cool. Finally, I have a little bonus for you. This is not something that I made, but it is a custom Lego minifigure of Yarna Dalgargan, made by Engineerio, who has quite a few custom Lego figures available. I'll link to their uh, Instagram and website in the video description. But yeah, I thought this was pretty cool, and I'm going to put her in my custom uh, Lego Java's Palace. And I'll say, uh, honestly, you can't go too far wrong with any of these choices, but uh, my favorite is the <laughs> large jumbo one there. That was kind of the impetus for me making this video originally, or wanting to make it, was that, uh, you know, I thought it'd be cool to have one to go along with my Jumbo Ula and my Jumbo Jabba and so forth, so I'm happy that I finally have that. I'd be interested to know which one of these is your favorite, and if you plan to add these or any other custom Yarnas to your collection. And thanks very much for watching. 
This video was brought to you with the help of my patrons from Patreon, especially these Palace VIPs right here. I really appreciate your help, especially Angelica Brady. And if you'd like to know how you could help support the channel for as little as $1 a month, you can click the link in the video description.